Well, thank you for sticking with us. Welcome back to the Sunday Review. As mentioned earlier on today, I'm joined by Honorable Adin Dwelde, the Member of Parliament for Garissa Township, to discuss the political state in the country as well as 2022 succession politics. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much for making time for us this evening. And I just want to begin with the issue on the trust deficit that you believe exists in the Kenyan politics. You've made it very clearly that you, as well as the deputy president, feel betrayed by the current government. And you've said you've had to do things in favor of being loyal to the president, things that you knew very well would hurt Kenyans. Moving into 2022, are you in any way worried that such statements sort of paints a negative picture for somebody who's already declared that he wants to run for the presidential ticket? No, no, I mean, uh, what I give was uh, the history of the or the common denominator yeah. uh, since uh, independence within the Kenyan political architecture yeah. is being domiciled. The common denominator is betrayal, deceit, and backstabbing. And yeah. you can go back, start with Jaramogi. Jaramogi didn't want to take power. He said Kenyatta must come out of jail. What happened to Jaramogi? What happened to Tom Boya? What happened to Gama Binto? Mm -hmm. Come to the second phase of Mzee Moy. Mzee Moy was the, the late Mzee Moy was the most humiliated yeah. president, even physically. Come to Moy himself when he was the president, you know, the likes of George Saitoti, Moy Kibaki. You come to the, the NAC government. I mean, what happened, the role uh, Honorable Raila Odinga played yeah. uh, and, and how he suffered until the 2005. Even during his grand coalition government, you know, that humiliation. And that's why the framers of the Constitution in 2010 now were cognizant of that fact and they have insulated in the Constitution mm -hmm. the office of the Deputy President. Yeah. And they said Kenyans must go and elect the presidency together. That they must, the ballot paper, yes. must have both the presidential candidate and his running mate. Unlike before where the President used to give an appointment letter. I mean, the last appointment letter was given to Kalonzo Musioka by President Kibaki. So that betrayal has been there. Yeah. But uh, those of us who worked with uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta yeah. in the last eight years, uh, young politicians, we thought with the 2010 constitution, we thought with the young leadership, we yeah. thought with the relationship that we developed as a jubilee, you know, and, 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 and our foundation was based on unity. You remember the 2013, it was the Rift Valley versus the Mount Kenya people yes. after the post-election violence. 2015, the president says, let's form a united party called Jubilee. The dividends, the dividends of that party was found in the 2017 general election. Majority in the both houses, in the county assemblies, okay. and we formed government. All right. So, I mean, we are, we, I, 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 I'm documenting it now in one of my memos, yes. uh, the whole history, for, for Kenyan uh, people and the politics too. But I think uh, from where we sit, myself and the deputy president, yes. we did what we should do as uh, key leaders around President Kenyatta. I delivered on the work given to him in a difficult uh, legislature. Uh, deliver on the part of Jubilee. Okay. And I'm sure the Deputy President, uh, if I can say, was the most loyal uh, principal assistant to the President. Well, still on the same breath of yes. loyalty to the President, yes. as the former majority leader yes. in the House, of course, part of your work is to champion for the government's agenda in the yes. House. And you're one of the leaders who was on the forefront on one of the proposals, that is the introduction of the 8% VAT. And right now, critics are sort of coming out to say and accuse you of double speak, considering you were one of the leaders who actually introduced that, which is part of the reason we're experiencing these fuel hikes. How do you answer to this? In fact, it's good tonight you're giving me an opportunity. Yes. The, 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 the introduction of VAT on petroleum products yeah. was put in the finance bill of 2018 by government, mm -hmm. okay? And the House rejected that section. Mm -hmm. In fact, an amendment was moved by none other than Honorable Junette Mohammed. So the House rejected it and deleted it. Okay. So when it went to the President, 
the president in exercise of his, of his powers, veto power, Article 115 of the Constitution, uh, wanted to return it. And there was a lot of discussion. Yeah. That time the country was facing serious um, revenue. And I think the, the, the technocrats in, the, in the, the national treasury and the state law office and the people who were around the president advised him that instead of 16%, return it with 8%. So when, he, when the president returns a memoranda yeah. or a reservation to the House, two things happen. The leader of majority, who by then was me, I have no any other business, is just to introduce that memoranda that the president has exercised his powers under Article 115, and I will read to the House the reasons why he has returned that piece of legislation yes. and exercised his powers. For the House to disagree with the president, they need to raise two-third majority. That day, they could only raise 215 members. Mm -hmm. So the person who put the country into this mess, and I want to say it on record, yes. it's not the members of parliament. It is the president. And that's why on the floor of the House, I said it. President Obama, in his eight years in power, exercised that power, that veto power, on the U.S. Congress, or House of Representatives, four times. President Kibaki, under the old uh, constitution, which, which didn't give him much leeway, yes. didn't exercise much. And this, the framers of the constitution introduced this veto power for the president to use in very extreme circumstances, circumstances yeah. to protect the citizens from a rogue parliament, All right. to protect the constitution. Okay. But it's very unfortunate to say, and I mean, the president is my best friend. Yeah. Uh, President Kenyatta has used the Article 115 veto power yes. outside what the framers of the Constitution anticipated. In other words, the President used it more than 35 times during my tenure, and even today as we speak, there are about four bills the President has returned, one mm -hmm. of them the refugee bill. So the President, in the reading of many, even in the 11th Parliament, the Honorable yeah. Jacoy Lee raised it, that the president wants to legislate through the back door. So that matter of the fuel lies yes. squarely. It is the president who exercises his powers. All right. Well, we and there was very it. little I could do anyway. Okay. I mean, Fair I, mean, I, mean I mean, members, uh, members uh, rarely uh, raise a two-third majority. They only raise uh, when the matter is a is a more common agenda for them. For them. Let All right. Say it. Fair enough. Well, we are already here that we are witnessing the hike of these prices and ODM party leader Raila Odinga was in Bungoma yesterday and he told his supporters that the fuel prices are going to go down next week. As a legislator and somebody who handles this considering it's a purview of the House, is this something that we should take? He do? Like, is it going to do? But let, but let, me, let me tell you. Yeah. In 2015, and this other thing that the, the country needs to know. In 2015, the current Minister for Petroleum, yeah. Honorable Munez, increased the petroleum levy fund from 0.5%, to 5 shilling and 40 cents. Mm -hmm. In order that whatever they will collect, they will use it as a subsidy and subsidize give it to oil marketers so that they don't increase the prices because the, the global prices are increasing. Okay. And I really want to go on record because I have done a bit of background. Yeah. Between July 2020, when he gazetted that increment to September this year, that fund has accumulated 31 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. And from the records available, even to parliament, only 8.5 billion was used as a subsidy to the oil marketers. Government has collected money from the people of Kenya. Yes. You know, the sad thing is, out of the 136 shillings you pay per liter, per liter? 78 shillings goes to taxes and levies. Yeah. It doesn't happen. And that is why fuel is cheaper in Tanzania, in Ethiopia, and in, uh, in, in, in Uganda. Uganda. Because there's huge taxation. But let me pick on that one. And I think they need to tell the country, Honorable Munez need to tell the country what happened to the other extra 23 billion that was collected in this financial year. All right. If that is given to the oil marketers as subsidies, 
So I think what Honor Boraila, because now he's in government, and uh, I can yeah. tell you, uh, yesterday, he, in my opinion, he has committed another political suicide. All right. Because uh, he said he said next week, yes, prices will come down. Will come down. Yes. So I'll, I'll wait for him. I mean, there's no bill before the house. All right. Uh, a bill must come. The chair of the finance committee is a member from his uh, party, Lobogradi Swanga. Yeah. I hope a miracle will happen. But uh, he has put a rope on his neck. All right. Fair but enough. Because maybe. May, may, may Maybe before he made the statement, he spoke to his brother. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. This wish you know, let's take... You know, this day's brother speak. <laughs> let's take a break at this point. I'm engaging the Honorable Member for Garissa Township, Honorable Adin Dwali, on the state of politics and generally what we are experiencing in the country. We want to take a short break, but do stay with us. We'll be back with this conversation. Thank you for staying with us. Welcome back to the Sunday Review. For those joining us right now in studio with me today is Honorable Adin Dwale, the Member of Parliament for Garissa Township, discussing the state we are in as a country. Now, Moshibu, just before the break, we were talking about double speak, And you've also accused Raila Odinga of double speak, especially when it comes to resource allocation yes. to marginalized communities. Yes. And on the other side, we have leaders from the north, East region and who have come up under the Opia movement and have said they're supporting the handshake and they're rallying behind right honorable Raila Odinga. How then would leaders who feel like the Raila does not have the interest that had rally behind him? No, no, no. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm not a member of the Opia caucus. Yes. I mean, that's a government project. That's why it's led by the Minister for Finance. Yes. And uh, you know, I'm a pastoralist. I'm the patron of the pastoral parliamentary group. We are 115. And the minister comes from one constituency. Yeah. I mean, I don't think whether majority will sit behind. But uh, let me come to the issue I had with the former prime minister. Yes. Because in a number of uh, meetings, he clearly stated, after the collapse of the BBI, that, uh, you know, you re your region, uh, most, mostly the, the, the Mount Kenya region, that, you know, BBI was giving you more resources. Yeah. That BBI was giving you more constituencies. For me, that is ridiculous. Okay. Today... If you read Article 203, Article 2, 
tomorrow, Tuesday, I mean next week, Tuesday, when we resume the House, we just need to amend the Division of Revenue Act 2021. Yes. And agree, if the President says, through his brother, Raila Odinga, says, we are going to allow counties 50%, that's it. One afternoon, we finish the National Assembly, yes. we take it to the Senate, so there was nothing like that in BBI. You can today give counties 50% of the national revenue. Two, the mandate to delimit constituencies yes. lies with IBC within the reading of Article 89, Sub-Article 4. The president and his brother were busy with the BBI. They took four years not to reconstitute the IBC into a full commission. Yes. Because IBC has timelines. Within eight years, they can delimit. Or within 12 years. If by 2018, IBC could have been properly constituted, by today, IBC could have given us new constituencies yes. based on the last census. So both on resource allocation and on constituencies, the former prime minister, my former leader, is playing politics. I B BBI, you know, apart from this sweetness, today there's a bill before the National Assembly, and I think Honorable Kimunya needs to fast track it, yeah. on the World Development Fund by Honorable Senator Kangata. So, you know, the, the BBI was only trying to do two things. Okay. Create an imperial presidency. Give the president powers to squat, to be a squatter in the legislature, control, capture this, the legislature, Capture, capture the well, judiciary? Well, that is basically if, IBI, uh, BBI. If, if, if you look at it, as much as the BBI conversation is sort of dead, for lack of a better word, since yes. it was halted at the yes. Court of Appeal, yes. the proponents of the document have said most of the proposals, if not all, the purpose was to enshrine them in the Constitution so they can be effected, because it has been very clear over the past few years that political will cannot get us anywhere. No, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need... Uh, Everybody wants counties to get money. Yeah. The people denying counties money and who are stifling devolution, particularly the last uh, five years of President Uhuru Kenyatta's administration, it is, own, it, is, it is his own government. Yes. I mean, today, the constitution gives 15%. The money we allocated to counties in the last financial year, counties are owed by the national treasury over 70 billion. I mean, how, what is the contradiction? You're telling me you want counties to get more money okay. and the one that you have, you don't want to give it to. I mean, this administration, the last four years, should be accused of renegating on the spirit of the Constitution by stifling resources to counties. Counties right. now can only pay salaries. Okay. So we can, we can one afternoon uh, give counties 50%. The president and his brother slept on the job. They didn't want to reconstitute. In fact, they were busy re, uh, planning to remove uh, Chapukati, only that they could not uh, raise the required threshold petition to the House. They brought a number of petitions. Yes. All of them, they couldn't reach the threshold. So I think uh, as we go forward, leaders of the caliber of the former prime minister, ourselves, the yeah. deputy president, I think must always, must always be very honest and must be truthful to what they tell the people of Kenya. All right, well, let's talk about your influence and what you're bringing to the partnership with the Deputy President. You've made it very clear that you're going to use the UD as a vehicle come next year. And we're looking at the North Rift region where you come from and there are already three factions that have come up from that place. We have the opium movement, we have the faction that is led by you, and also we have the faction led by the Mandela governor that is mm, Roba. And his place, the Mandera governor's place, is not necessarily known. Say he was to join hands in support of the handshake team, what sort of task do you have on your side number to one, consolidate uh, fire? Yes, number one, let me tell you. Yeah. In last election, 2017, yes. we delivered both seats and votes, 99% to Jubilee. Hmm. ODM got only two members of parliament yeah. in Northeastern out of the 31 seats. And in fact, one they lost through again to a partition. So as we speak today, ODM had, has only one member of parliament. They were Jir North member of parliament. Yes. Upia, until today, is not a party. So you can't uh, bring Upia at the same level with UDA. 
Okay. It's not a party. UDA is a party with 160 members of parliament. You know, UPI I told you is a project. And out of the 106 members of the pastoralist parliamentary group, where I am the patron, mm -hmm. a handful, less than 11 of them, are, are coalescing around UPIA. So about 90 are not with UPIA. Two, the governor of Madeira is a very good friend of mine. Yeah. We are hearing from the grapevine that he has formed a, a regional party. Okay. And uh, I cannot talk about it now. He's my very good friend. Once he launches his party, we will understand the impact here. But my advice to the people of the north yes. uh, is that, and to the people of Kenya, I think our, 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 our democracy has matured. Okay. We are better off building national parties. Parties where each and every Kenyan, regardless of his ethnicity and religion and the region he comes from, can feel at home. I mean, when we built Jubilee as a national party, yes. that's how I became the leader of majority. All right. Because, Fair I mean, the party will find uh, the minority of the minority. The party will find the competence of its membership and give him a position. Okay. But well, if, we, if we form now, you see, in Central, I think there are more than 10 parties. Okay. If you go to, <laughs> even I was in Nakuru yesterday, and I'm told the governor of Nakuru has a party, you know. All right. But, and, and all these is a state project. Let's, 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 let's all talk these about, are state let's, let's talk a and bit they, about. And they will collapse. <laughs> all right, let's talk <laughs> a bit about Mount Kenya politics. And I want to refer to an article on one of our dailies, and it said, um, Tanga Tanga's entire Mount Kenya strategy rests on assumption that the region can never ever vote for Raila no matter what. This assumption is foolish. The tide is turning slowly, but surely, indeed, Tanga Tanga's may be in for the shock of their lives. As a politician planning to use the UDA vehicle and different leaders trying to consolidate votes from the Mount Kenya region, where does this leave you come next year? No, let me tell you. I mean, uh, we are not foreigners in Mount Kenya. Yes. We have been there the last eight years. I mean, we are partners with the people of Mount Kenya. Since the 2012 ICC, both the Mount Kenya and Rift Valley, these are serious bond, and the pastoralist. I mean, we have our own constituency. The deputy president is inheriting fast and contained the Jubilee old constituencies, which are intact. And then he's making forest to the uh, constituents that belong to the former NASA, which has now collapsed. But let me tell you one thing that uh, is very, very clear. Yes. Uh, uh, is that uh, uh, the people who are telling us now to, that uh, Mount Kenya will vote for Royal Odinga are the same people who told us, including myself, that we must demonize Royal Odinga. I mean, President Uhuru Kenyatta is at the forefront as my party leader. Yes. Not once, not twice. Forced us to write statements for us to read. That's why I told you sometimes we did something we, which we never thought. Okay. He demonized. And I think he needs to go back and do another 15 years civic education to the people of Mount Kenya. The people of Mount Kenya are not cows. Okay. I mean, they're not. Let me, let me, let no, no, let me, let me, let me, let me rephrase. All right. The people of Mount Kenya... You cannot tell them this and this. I mean, Honorable Raila Odinga, I'm not saying, he must still get votes. Yes. But you know, Honorable Raila Odinga was demonized by the leadership. And uh, even the people now who are uh, putting him for lunch on and all that, yeah, yeah. I want to make it very clear. The business, the billionaires, yes. they play a safeguard. Okay. As if, in fact, in 2013 and 2017, they were both funding us and they were funding the NASA and the Code coalitions. All right. Yes. Let's talk a bit about the democracy in UDA. Now, word on the street is that UDA is not necessarily looking into forming coalitions. You want to go at it as a party. But the leaders you're engaging right there, we have Ma, the Gatindu South Member of Parliament, Moses Kuri, and the yeah. different leaders have said that is not an option of disbanding their parties. How do you sit with this? No, you know, uh, we have started UDA's principle yeah. is based on the hustler movement. Okay? And the hustler movement from our own reading is a movement of the Kenyan people. Okay. That has no tribe, that has no region, that can only share different types of faith. Okay? Now the moment we disfranchise the hustler movement, the people of Kenya, 
into regional and parties and ethnic led parties, yes. then we lose the meaning, the bigger meaning of the Hasala movement. Secondly, our ideology is based, and I want to speak for the pastoralists and the people of the north, that the days when Honorable Duale will go and negotiate for a position for himself mm -hmm. on the table, that ideology is no longer with UDA. I will go to UDA with the rest of the leadership from the north and the pastoralists, and we will negotiate what is in the best interest for, one, for the Wanjiku in the north. Okay. So this is why we're missing people. You know, Honorable Korea, Honorable, uh, even Isaac Ruto wants to join our, uh, to become an affiliate. There are many people, even Honorable Governor, I'm sure once he formed his party, yeah. he wants. But our point of departure is that, wait a minute, we, UDA is not based, its philosophy is not premise on leaders sharing positions. Its philosophy is premise on how do we empower, how do we create that bottom-up economic model yes. based on the local context for the north, for the lake, for the rift, for coast, for the mountain. So and basically, there is nothing like folding, you're going we, at it as a party. We are not <laughs> in a hurry yes. to form coalitions. That right. one, you can take it to the bank. All right. Yes. Thank you very much for <laughs> making time for us today. Um, fortunately, we are out of time. Thank you for your time. That was Gadesa Township Member of Parliament, Honorable Adi Duali, just discussing the state of politics as well as what we are experiencing as a country moving forward. Let's take another break. We get back with some sports news.